Hey boys and girls of the YouTube world, today the Dump Dog and I are going to see if we can't get this old Chevy Rollback running for the first time in like 10-ish years. So we just drug this thing home from Rapid City. <laughs> Alright, we made it. We're going to go check it out. I can see it from here. It looks like she's got a little whammo in the hood. He's got a way to load it up, but he's got some critters and we're in a new area. So I'm going to put Duff on a leash and we'll see how that goes. Should be interesting. Duff's not much of a leash dog. This is going better than I thought. Oh boy. Relax. Yeah, I don't know about all these curves and trees and hills. Might be interesting trying to get this thing loaded, huh, Duff? Oh my gosh. Throttle her back. Oh yeah, we got an air bumper jack too. Pretty excited about that. Well, here she is. Last tag in 13. So yeah, 10 years she's been off the road. Central Hills Towing. Champion bed. Mud sluts on the back. I'm sure none of these lights work. I don't see any uh, scotch clips or uh, wire nuts yet. Oh yeah, if we're gonna need a couple lenses. Oh, perfect, just what we need. Duff, how do you like that leash? You hate it, don't you? So we've got a tire off the bead to fix, but a little rot in the cab corner? Oh no, maybe just, maybe just a little bit. Should be good to go. Oh, those are different door handles. The uh, later OBS interior, automatic. Oh yeah, a little rust in the door there, not too bad. I think we'll take it. All right, he's got that John Deere tractor loader backhoe thinger. He's gonna just nudge us up onto the trailer. I guess. Duff, go for a ride. He's like, I know it doesn't run. Oh, look at that sweet seat fix. Duff, does that smell like trucker farts? Let's move over. Somebody ruined our steering wheel. 241,000. What do you think about this thing? She needs a little work. Black Hills Harley was a good customer. Power windows. Oh yeah. Power windows, but rubber floor mat. It's got the good seat though. Yeah, it's got the good seat, huh, Duffy? All right, sliding rear window. What a deal. This thing is deluxe for a wrecker. A wrecker, rollback. We need to find a steering wheel. We're gonna need, we're gonna need to find a lot of things for this, I got a feeling. A little bit of shipping damage, but he said no charge for the loading. All right, I wonder if our ramps are gonna fit in there. Got a little debacle here. We are tight against the drive over fenders on the old Lamar. And we're on the fender on this side. And I don't want to drive it home 400 miles hanging like that. So we're going to pop this outside dual off and set her down.
Holy shnikes, was that fun? Put a 19.5 tire up on that bed by myself. All right, let's put some lug nuts back on this thing. Let's see, we got these fancy air fillers. 225, 70, 19.5s. I think we're gonna be in the market for some. Probably don't need to put them all on there, but if I don't put them all on, we'll lose them for sure. I'm gonna need a sandwich after this. 10 lug nuts is way too good. Oh, look at that, all kinds of room for activities. Look at all this floor space. So much aerobics in here. So many activities. Do step class. It's making my head spin how many activities we can do. Let's bring your head a little more. At least we're all the way on the trailer now. Well, Eisenheimer Wrecker Sales, Hornell, New York. Well, actually, I'm gonna tie her down right there. We can always winch it ahead or back, but I think that'll ride. I'm guessing the center of gravity is about right there. Perfect. Yeah, I have no idea. We're just winging it. We're, we're gonna have to go dig in the scrap pile so we can find a OBS hood to put on here because that's terrible. Oh, chicken chasers, what a deal. She is getting warm out, boys and girls. 70 degrees at six, seven o'clock at night. All that running around. We spent too much time in the cab of a heated compact piece of equipment when snow this winter should have been out shoveling more. Summer dad bod going. used to when you're working with a short strap, if you know what I mean. All right, we are loaded up. It is 725 mountain time, so 825 at home seven hours for we get home at 3 30 in the morning if we blast through we'll see how it goes duff we might be crashing out somewhere along the way we'll see see how it goes check the title it is a 1998 chevrolet it's got a big block in it i don't know let's uh let's take a look at her see what we got going on this is i don't know what they call it they call them a one ton or they call them a ton and a quarter, but it's got the, the big 10 lug wheels and the 19.5 tires. It's got the, the silly bumper spacer here, like the body lift looking deal. I always didn't really care for that. It's got kind of a silly door handle. I noticed this when we were opening stuff. It should be just like the lip that you lift up underneath, which I think the other side has, but maybe the bigger trucks had this. Maybe this door's off like a Kodiak or something. I don't know. Central Hills Towing was unaware of it. Oh, it is a 3500, but it's a 3500 HD. That must be what gets you the uh, the 10 luggers, eh, Duff? But apparently they were a Ford and Crayon fan, which a lot of Ford people are. Just kidding. Don't throw your crayons at the computer or the TV or your iPhone or your phone booth, whatever you're watching this video on. But that looks uh, super duty-ish to me and it looks very crannish but 
Looks like they got a little American flag going on in the hood, so that's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. It definitely needs tow mirrors. I got a, a busted visor. It's got the chicken chasers up top. We should maybe do a Mortsky Minute on chicken chasers. It's got the gumballs up top. Some marker lights over here. She's a champion bed. We all know I hate red. And I'm a poet, didn't even know it. It's got a little pinstripe action going on here. Silverado, which is kind of neat for usually these big rigs where, you know, rubber window, rubber window. Duff, can you get rubber windows? Rubber floor mat roll up windows. Uh, story is these guys had multiple trucks. This was the spare. They parked it. This gentleman bought it. He was going to take the bed and put it on an even bigger chassis. Things didn't come to fruition. He's watching our channel. I was looking for a rollback. I said I wanted one. He said, I got a deal for you. Boom. He held it for me. Went and got it. Before they sold it to him, I guess they backed something into the... Uh, Hood here screwed it up but i think we got another hood lined up in white uh what is it 94 95 they came out with these nicer more rounded grills more modern the other ones are a lot more flat the 88 to uh 93s whatever we're calling them i mainly call these 96 to 98 pickups but i think there was some some 95 stuff involved uh I think it's a Vortec 454, should be being a 98. It's got the fender flares. I'm guessing these fender flares are different, one ton HD only because they drop way down here with their silly body lift thinger. That gap sucks. It's got simulators, because why wouldn't it? I think we're missing that guy on the other side. How's the windshield duff? Oh, he gave us a bunch of destructions on how to run or fix or do something with the champion bed. So we'll be sure to read those not i thought these all had like the nice molded mirrors but who knows like i said i think some things have been swapped because yeah we got a regular style door handle here duff wants to check it out like i said power windows power locks kind of strange for a work truck but it does have rubber floor mats and it's got the nicer seats with the console anything in the center console duff no nope, cleaned out and uh i think she's broken these seats super comfortable they're pretty durable. They're not as durable as the 88 to 94s, but yeah, this one's uh, been patched a bit, as you can tell. That'll fix it. What is that, Duff? Is that a ski mask? Were we robbing some banks in this thing? Oh, you want to set up an account? Yeah. Yeah. I just don't like people to see my face. A sleeve? Oh yeah, that's definitely somebody's sleeve or a leg from a long john. You probably don't have long johns where you're at, but we got them up here to keep warm in the winter. Oh, they even did a little stitch in them sewed her up real nice looks pretty solid though like i said rapid city super dry i think this thing had a gazillion miles on it the work trucks had the i don't think they had the airbag yeah it's got the void over there in the dash it doesn't have the airbag in the wheel it looks like 241,716 miles so that's a lot of towing oh there's a crack in the bottom of the windshield we got a switch there we got switches all over here Miller Industries towing equipment should have AC. I'm guessing the PTO runs off of a belt underneath the engine, but maybe it runs off the 4L80E. Maybe it doesn't even have a 4L80E, but it's an automatic. So let's turn the key off in case we do hook a battery up. Well, yeah, it doesn't go. So we're going to need a battery. What's behind the seat? Anything? Anything back there, Duff? Some paperwork? Oh, just some road service paperwork. Nothing we can't live without. But look at this. Somebody was real hard on this door. And they took it to a real professional body shop. And just uh, mudded that striker up real good. What's this? Manufactured by date of manufacture. I'm guessing this was when they put the bed on. Yeah, Champion. Champion Care Corporate, Carrier Corporation. Uh, June of 98. Vehicle manufacturer, 11 to 97. 15,000 pound vehicle gross weight. 5,000 front, 225, 70 R19.5 tires. So, she was built in June of 98 by the uh, Champion Corporation. So I'm guessing they would just buy the cabin chassis and put the bed on it. Got some cute little tow hooks up here. I'm guessing that's the air box. I don't believe that hole be there but what do i know judging by the discoloration she's been off for quite some time looks like she's got a ramsey winch on it 
That must be the uh, engage. Disengage lever, come on. There we go. Pretty heavy duty cable on it. What is that, 12,000 pound? 8,000? Who knows? We had a little shop party, clean this place up. And uh, so we use this as a table, brought her in here. And we took these bed rails, bed extensions off. Yeah. And so we, we uh, enjoyed some sandwiches on it. Toolbox? Probably locked. Nope. What's in here? Spare hydraulic hose, used. Ooh. Straps, tied in a knot. Nothing but the finest. Some reflectors. ATF from the old Napa. Brake fluid. Pretty much everything you need to salvage a car on the side of the road. Frame's got a nice black paint on it. I don't know that you should have a red fuel cap. What's green is diesel. I don't know what, what's red. Blue is kerosene. Anyway, that's kind of a pain to fill from factory, but whatever. I did notice the bed has got kind of a heave here. Right there. And I looked underneath and it looks like we got to do a little aluminum welding up there. So I don't know if somebody was shoving it around, but yeah. Banged up that cross member and those ones and tore some welds. So somebody was definitely picking up on it and not, I mean, it wasn't standard use. Somebody did something. Looks like we got four levers here. Five, I can't count. What the heck? So one's probably for a winch. One is for lifting tilting the bed and one's for sliding the bed forward and back one is to probably run the stinger back here in and out and one is to run the stinger up and down if i were to guess i'm guessing this is a bracket that slides in for the stinger this is the stinger or what i call a stinger put that up to the wheels on the car you chain it to it lift her up and you can haul two cars or three if they're really small like mini coopers two on the bed one on the back Got some backup lights. We definitely busted out a tail light loading it up. There's a little bit of aluminum welding that could be done back there. That's the problem with these aluminum beds is they get damaged a little bit more easily than steel and they're harder to repair if you aren't set up to do aluminum, kind of like me. He said there's a 36 Chevy emergency brake handle and that's uh, holding this stinger up. So he said, don't run it down or you're gonna have issues. I'm guessing there should be a little bit bigger pin in there, but that's what's holding that up so it don't sag down. And then when you get your car on the stinger, I guess you can adjust them in and out for width, and then you uh, must chain it to that. We'll have to watch some YouTube videos on how to run that stuff. Ooh, backup alarm. Light socket. She's pretty corroded. Looks like an old five pin round. Again, some more aluminum that should probably be welded. We might as well put both brake lights in it while we're at it. Oh, sure enough. Uh, bed travel, bed tilt, winch cable. Wheel lift in and out. Oh, they're not calling it a stinger. They're calling it a wheel lift and then wheel lift up and down. So I guess good. Yay me. Uh, we did swap a tire onto the front there because we couldn't get the original one to seal on the bead. But in the meanwhile, we'd stole that one off to roll it in the shop. We got to put the simulator back on. Heck of a stack of leaf springs on this thing, of course. I wonder if they stretched it or if they got it. Oh yeah, she's definitely been stretched right in there. Ray Charles welded that up real nice. You got the right one, baby. Okay, or it was broken there. I'm guessing it was stretched. But who knows? I guess we'll find out, Duff. Looks like the exhaust dumps right at the rear end. Big single. Oh boy. Same guy that stretched the frame must have stretched that exhaust. Real nice. Yeah. A little bit of rust in this cab corner, like just barely starting. And then I thought it was the early 90s that had the, the paint issues, but there's a lot of paint coming off this thing. And maybe somebody swapped a cab sometime. Who knows? Spare solenoid back here. Some electrical. Some more electrical. Some lag screws. He threw in this pallet. He thought we needed that. So I guess we'll find a home for that. They got a lot of uh, pine trees where this thing was parked, Black Hills things. So yeah, squeaky door, broken V-belt. Oh, he does have the add-on tow mirrors, what a deal. Oh, these were the tire pressure gall dang it. 
uh, that were on the simulator. We had to take off the rear. Uh, what are these bushings? Look a little, a little chewy. Oh, worse for wear. Some Central Hills towing pens. We call them up. I don't know that these guys are still in business. They got the Crayon Super Duty on there. Serving Hill City and Keystone. If you're ever in Hill City, go check out, oh, what's the name of that place? There's a cute little restaurant. You can get a quarter head of lettuce and a small steak or a big steak. Those are the only options other than what you get on said lettuce for your salad. Uh, the Alpine Inn. Go check out the Alpine Inn if you're ever there. Ooh. Got some speed nuts. 9006 bulb. 9005. Way off. Way off. Duracell. Cute little Superman flashlight. That's probably some collector edition. Don't work. Hot sauce packet. Nope. Rubber cement. Yep, for patching your rubber together. Don't know what that is. All right. Yeah, the standard half ton and three quarter ton pickups would have an airbag here, 98, but for some reason the work trucks and these larger ones got away with not needing that. Looks like uh, Black Hills Harley Davidson, well, Frank Hardman, the sales representative, was a good customer or something, maybe, who knows? Let's get the hood open and uh, see what we got going on underneath. See if we can throw a battery in it. So, 10 year old fuel. Not good. Uh, fuel injection, so we don't have a carburetor to deal with. So literally the only thing uh, I think we can do to this thing is throw a battery in it, see what happens. I'm guessing the fuel pump's gonna be shot. I'm guessing there's a fuel pump in the tank, high pressure, and we're gonna have to pull that out. Seems like they're always bad. Let's be honest, we should have just put this thing on the lift from the start, dropped the tank, and had a uh, fuel pump sitting here. But I'm guessing they're not cheap. So, I mean, they're not like a mechanical one where they're $15 on Rock Auto, so I should have one sitting around. And there's probably a bunch of different ones for different wheelbases and different size fuel tanks and different engines, and yada, yada, yada. So we're not gonna have one on hand, so. I guess what I'm saying is, let's just open the hood, take a look, throw a battery in it, hook up a fuel pressure gauge, see if we're getting fuel pressure. Check for fuel pressure, check for spark, and go from there. This thing's got like some type of throttle body injection of sorts. It's not direct injection with a bunch of injectors, I don't think. It's been a long time since I worked on a Vortec. All right, you open the hood with this guy. Or not, I don't know. You wanna open the hood for us? You haven't done that in a while. You know what's not interested, this is too new. It turns out the latch on the inside wasn't doing anything. It was just that. We should go get a light over here. It looks like a lot going on here. The air cleaner is just kind of hanging in the open. There's some wires hanging in the open. We're missing, oh my gosh, the coolant overflow cap. There's a lot to take in here. We got a dual terminal DT78. Let's, we'll see when it was parked. Where's the date code on this thing, Duffers? We're gonna have to do a little digging. But this air compressor, it's not hooked up with a belt. It's not f rusted up solid, but it's not, the two lines aren't hooked to anything. So I'm guessing they were pumping just air with that because there's the factory air compressor. So a lot of times they would put these York compressors to uh, have compressed air so you pump up tires and blow stuff off and such. So maybe there's an air tank on this thing. It doesn't have headers, so that's good. I don't know that I've ever worked on a Vortec 454. So, this will be new. Hydro boost. So clearly it's got power steering. Looks like it It most definitely had a second battery at one time. Somebody made a nest out of the old battery tray. There's your computer. There's your ABS stuff. Fuse relay center. Cruise control. What a deal. Wiper motor. No flexi hose. Perfect. And I see a couple of V-belts down there. I'm betting that's what drives. I'm betting there's a pump down there, hydraulic, electric over hydraulic pump. Oh yeah. There it is. Oh, it's got a great big flexi hose on it. What a deal. So yeah, where's the reservoir? Who knows? Don't ask questions. Let's just get it running first. Check the dipstick, Jimmy. Dipstick! 
is full. So I guess we're free to start cranking it over. It's so strange. The throttle body, instead of being up front, it's over here off to the side. There's our, I don't know. This was a gauge that would tell you if your air filter's plugged up. and That's not there. Mass airflow sensor. What's that? Manifold absolute pressure sensor, something like that. These do have distributors in them. The LSs don't. Let's put that back in place. There we go. Now she's sealed up tight. I guess I'm going to have to find out where the fuel line comes in and we can hook up a pressure gauge so that we can determine if our fuel pump's working. Or maybe we just cycle the key and see if we can hear it fuel pumping. Yeah. First thing we're going to do is get this hood out so that uh, we get some light over here because somebody put the last lights right there and there's no lights. Right. Oh, we got this guy. We could turn that guy on. Oh, yeah. Way more light now. How did it get so rusty right there? Somebody spilled battery acid? Dang, kids. All right, let's get this hood off. Put a little light on the subject. And by subject, I mean Vortec Big Blocks. All right, 13 mil, let's pull the hood off. I think 88 to 98 hoods are all the same, but what do I know? Windshield's already cracked, so we don't care if we break that anymore. Maybe I. Old Land Shark Garage gave us this tip. Get yourself a panel carry. Carry plywood and drywall easily. Provides balance and visibility. I got this out of Amazonia. 200 pound weight limit. Made in America with global materials. So uh, it's imported plastic. And let's see how this works. I'm not sold on it yet. Okay, it's pretty good. All right, out of five stars, this is a pretty, pretty girthy hood maybe i don't know i don't think i think this thing was like 20 bucks 10 bucks something like that easy to store hanger up on the wall first time i've used it five star review ah uh, i'll give her three stars it might be handy but it might not because this is for like carrying you know four foot long a hood is longer than that maybe i'm using it wrong there's no destructions on it so yeah Oh, and then it says, in Mexico, imported by, so they put the sticker on in USA or what? Anyway, I wasn't expecting much to be made in America for, we'll say it's 20 bucks. Get yourself one, they're pretty handy. Probably would work for carrying doors or, I don't know, you can climb the sides of buildings with it, you know, Spider-Man style. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider Look at how much room we got under here now. Ooh, once we evict this guy, we'll have even more room. Ugh. Yeah, a little bit left in here. Let's you can get that out. Everybody's like, oh, you got to pressure wash those things before you work on them. Ah, ain't nobody got time for pressure washing. Ain't nobody got time for that. Then that pudding character. Oh, yeah. Now let's get this battery situation figured out. I'm guessing this is all accessory stuff or for the additional battery. And then just these side posts here are for the GM stuff. So let's, let's get it running. Let's worry about the GM stuff first. West down Illinois. Really appreciate all this shoddy electrical going on here. You can see I don't know, like, you know how your, your, your pants get too short? Well, that uh, cable sheathing definitely got too short there. Don't look like it got hot. I don't know what's going on. We'll leave that hooked up, otherwise we'll forget about it. We get the old power fist down here. Unhook the battery cable. Of course, somebody put a 3 ace regular bolt on the other side, so we're going to go get a 9 16 if I can get this back off there. Got it. We're going bolts even in there, just not tight. Ooh, that side bow, she's a little, a little furry, a little hoover schneef going on in there, Duff. You want to take a drag of that? Yeah, me either. All right. Nasty. We might need a battery cable. We'll see. I'm going to have to give her the old wire wheel. Well, she ain't too bad, actually. 
I'm the only person who likes side blow stuff, I guess. When well maintained. Looks like we got, yeah boy, as a battery sponsor this week. Yeah boy! Oh, that was our 3 ace bowl, but it hit the floor. Oh yeah, we're above the floor drain too, perfect. That's why I love these DT78s. Du DT is dual terminal, so you can put them in something with a top post, something with a side post. You can put them in something with a side post and a top post. Let's get the wire brush, clean that up a bit. Here the old Oklahoma toothbrush action here. Wait, they got toothbrushes in Oklahoma? I guess so. Old Puddin's got to take care of that gold tooth. All right, I think I even got the right bolt somewhere. Let's see if we can't find one. Why find the right bolt if this thing isn't even gonna run? Never mind. we're putting this back in. You should soak up the positive first. That way if you touch it against something, it don't arc out. Isn't that what we learned in auto school, tech, technology, something or other? There, that's good and tight. Put our negative here. Well, maybe we'll clean that up a bit first. Really, we'll clean up the old negative a bit here. He's a little furry in there. You don't want, you don't want fur on your battery cable ends. Not a good spot for the fur. Well, it hasn't burned down yet. Don't see any smoke. Took me a little digging, but there is the Schrader valve for the fuel system. And it, since it doesn't have a cap on it, I'm guessing somebody was checking that out before. And they did say that it ran rough when they uh, retired it or so. Anyway, we got this cheapy fuel injection pump tester. I'm going to thread that on there, turn the key on. We're going to see what happens, eh, Duff? Just enjoying this amazing May weather we're having. Like, really? We couldn't have put this in a better spot? Maybe if we take this. Oh, my gosh. What is that? Snorkelage. Probably don't need to tighten her up with the pliers, but you know, just for safety. Needs a hose to be long enough to put her up underneath the wiper, but let's turn the key, see what happens. You think it's gonna go? Yeah, me either. All right, we got any dome lights on? Headlights? We don't even get any dinging. Well, okay. We got no lights in here. Let's turn the headlights on, see what happens. I can't imagine we got a bad connection after we Oklahoma toothbrush those connections. How about uh, dead battery, Duff says. We'll check that. Well, it says we got 12 and a half volts, so that's not our issue. Guess we'll start checking some connections. I'm guessing this guy on the factory battery cable was supposed to be hooked up to something. And it's probably now this cable right here, so. Oh yeah, now we're getting some sparkage. That's probably the issue. Oh. Let's see if that fixes it. Oh yeah. We got some park lights, A headlight, dome light. Well, that door light ain't working. But that little guy is. All right, let's turn the headlights off. Wipers? Hopefully we didn't scratch our cracked windshield. Let's try cranking it, what the hey? She's stuck? Maybe. But also, we got no fuel pressure. Hmm, let's pull the fuel pump relay and abandon that for now. And let's see if we can get this thing turning over. I know, we should have oiled the cylinders. One of these for the fuel pump? That would be way too easy if it was right there. Starter relay, we might need that fuel pump relay. All right. Pull that guy out. 
Now, why isn't it turning over? I wonder if that hydraulic pump could be locked up. It's not letting the engine turn over. You can see it did turn ever so slightly. The old CarQuest belt, KO61000 was uh, sitting right under here. So it did turn a little bit. Hard to say what be, could be causing that. Surely it couldn't be any of our electrical connections. Let's see what happens. Try her now. It's trying. The way she's surging, I feel like compression is a little weak on a couple of them. And something's definitely smoking over there. Can't imagine a starter. What's so angry over here? It smells very electrical. Did we already crap out the starter and we haven't even started yet. Ugh. Let's get the old air box. Well, air intake system. The air box has already been removed. Let's get all this hot garbage out of the way, see what happens. Well, the power cables aren't warm, but the ground is super hot. So I'm guessing the ground is the issue. We don't need that where we're going. The nice part about a rollback is you got all kinds of room to just throw the parts from what you're working on on the bed. Oh, that filter's fine. We'll blow her out. Good for another 100,000. So what are all these wires? Well, that one must not be that important. It's not hooked to anything. And this guy... Oh, that's going to our hydraulic pump, so... We might be needing that later. Can't go wrong with the uh, blue insulated connector and a whole bunch of exposed wires that are all green. I'm sure that won't be an issue. Or this bullet connector that's not hooked to anything. Well, that's for the air compressor. We don't need that. So where is this ground going that's so dang hot? Well, I guess it's going to this bracket on the back of the alternator or whatever we got going on here. It's really not that warm down at that end. Is that the same wire? Yeah, it most definitely is. Interesting. Hmm. 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 All right, so now I think we're just going to pull a plug wire off and we're going to check for spark. And then we'll go from there. If we got spark, we're going to check for fuel, which I don't think we have. So, spark it is. Pull off our number two plug wire. Seems like it's in pretty good shape. It's always a good day when the boot doesn't just explode on you. Let's see if we can put that somewhere where I can see it from the driver's seat when I'm cranking it over. All right, we got spark, so we just got to get fuel. So maybe we'll play around with that relay, see if we can't jump the fuel pump, but I'm guessing that fuel pump is shot because ethanol sitting for a long time, bad news. Oh, I thought those were wires hanging out of our wiper, but yeah, never mind, we saw those working earlier. All right, let's uh, check, see if it's got fuel in it before we check for fuel at the uh, fuel area. Oh. Oh, you gotta love the fuel gauges in these things. They always got the old twitch to them. Did it, did it, did it. Well, I would say that it's got five sixteenths of a tank of fuel if this thing works. So, yeah, I guess uh, we'll go from there. We'll assume there's fuel in the tank. I bet if this thing ran, you could just tilt the bed back and swab a fuel pump real easy that might not be too bad we'll see maybe we'll pull a connector off see if we got power at the pump things are getting interesting so we got the old power probe three out here that's my electrical diagnostics tool and so this relay is for the ac we'll put them in here side by side to show you 
you can put these in backwards. And if you know anything about relays, there's, uh, what are your critical terminals? 30, 85, 87, 87A and 86. One of these things here is not like the other. Well, probably because I put that one in the wrong way, but anywho, uh, yeah, you can see these are a 3604 and this is a 7234. And these are a five terminal, this is, and these are four terminal. So this doesn't have your uh, normally closed. The 87A pin is not on it and it's not populated, but it's populated in this. The interesting thing is they pin out significantly different. So where's this guy? Which way does it go in there? Maybe they don't. No, they do. So there's 30 is, is in this corner on this one. 30 is in the opposite corner on this one. 87 is in this corner. 87 is in this corner. So maybe, and this can only go in one way because of that 87A pin, or this can go multiple ways. So that's, I don't know if they had the wrong relay in here, but then it definitely would have ran. We do have power at 30, so that's our battery power. We've got key power at 87, and then we've got ground at 85. So we're getting all of our signals, but they don't correspond with the way this thing is pinned out. So it really, it shouldn't have worked. But when we send power to, what is it, 86? Yeah, we send power to 86, which should go to the fuel pump. The fuel pump doesn't run. So we're gonna go underneath. We're gonna check for power down there, both with a jumper and with our power probe and with this relay in, and we'll see. I did crawl underneath there, trying to get the connector unhooked. And then Mojo told me that, hey, we're out of water, and this thing's in the way for where we got to pump water. So I'm going to move a bunch of stuff back here, get it out of the way, and we're going to roll this thing back and put some water in here because we guess we got to have water to wash our hands and use the potty and pressure wash. And we got a couple errands to run. And those errands are all the winners. I think there's 24 or 25 or 26 of you that guessed May 10th on the Mount Mortsky. Melting Grape Concord debacle. So for you folks, we got t-shirts packed up, ready to go. We're doing t-shirts in-house. You can order yours on mortski.com. You can get keychains, magnetic screwdrivers, uh, decals, air fresheners, shirts. So yeah, click that in link down below and you can get them, mortski.com. And we also got a few other things to ship out and also, we hit up a little swap meet this weekend, the old Art Olson swap meet. I think it's 49th annual in Fargo. It used to be at Bonanzaville, but now it's at the fairgrounds. Let's show you what we got there. We got this fuel jug, the best fuel jugs ever. Five bucks. Somebody just broke the nozzle off and it's threaded in. So not only can we just put an easy out in there, tap that out, put a barb fitting on it. We also just happen to have a spare cap laying around. We still got to find a, a barb for that, but anyway. Five bucks, those jugs are like 50 new. Got this 1939 Ford coupe seat. So these coupe seats will fit anywhere from 35 to 40 Ford coupes. And I've got a 35 Ford coupe that needs a seat, but I also have a 40 seat that I can put in it. The neat part about this seat is I bought it from a gentleman named Joe at the auction, at the auction, at the swap meet. He goes, what's your name? And I told him my name and he goes, yeah, you need this seat. And I was like, a new Joe from years back. I haven't seen him in 20 years. And I said, that's not from my grandpa Jonas's car. And he says, yep. So my great grandfather, Jonas Bierk, bought this 39 Ford Coupe brand new. Joe has been working on this car for almost 40 years and he's putting some late model bucket seats in it. So it's pretty cool. My grandpa, great grandpa farted on this seat probably in, you know, 1939. So it's got some family history, so it's pretty cool. Got my grandpa's old seat back. Gave it to me for a hundred bucks, so it's a pretty screaming deal on a coupe seat, and I got no home for it, so we'll find a spot for it someday. Another viewer from Hazen, North Dakota, he was cleaning out kind of his dad's estate and some junk he had, so we got a bunch of carburetors, quadra jets, uh, single barrel Rochesters for 235s, uh, Marvel Shebler off the of Model A, Holly slash Motocraft Ford two barrel. What else? What else we got in here? Oh, what are they, those YF1s or some dang thing? I can't remember what they're called. 
But anyway, that's a Carter carburetor for the old 216s. Got some five on five and a half chrome reverses with some Firestone Super Sports L6015s. Um, you know me, I like wheels, especially when they're chrome reverses and they're five on five and a half, which is kind of hard to find decent sized wheels for. Those will make some cool rollers just for mocking something up or you can always get them re-chromed if you really wanted to get crazy. Got a couple of these sweet engine stands. Looks like they're from Brock Supply Incorporated. 10 bucks a piece. The swivels are worth more than that. And they're adjustable. You can slide this up and down. You can uh, move that left and right. So I like these because you can make them work on a nail head. You can make them work on a Y block. You can make them work on a flathead, a Chevy 6, whatever. And like I said, for what I paid for them, you can't buy the caster wheels. I think I gave 20 bucks for those. I think I gave 10 bucks for all those carburetors because he wanted them gone. This is probably the best thing we got. Foreman, North Dakota, that is my hometown hotel graph. Never have heard of it. Dad's never heard of it. Home cooked meals. Uh, one of you viewers actually told me about this thing. I went to go find the signs. There was two of them. And the guy said they already sold. And he said, but here's the guy I sold them to. And I looked at the phone and I'm like, ah, I know who that is. That's Fritz. So I called Fritz. I said, what's the deal on those foreman signs? He goes, how'd you know? And I said, I got 140,000 faithful, faithful viewers. So one of you guys uh, saw this first, but he gave 100 bucks a piece for him. I actually traded him one of them, probably the worst of the two, but whatever, props to him for that mobile sign up there. So I got to get that to him. He's a big sign collector guy, but... That was cool that he would uh, pass this on. So that's that's really cool. I'm gonna have to look that up at the museum and find out what the history is on the old hotel graph. So super cool sign. He says these things in nice shape are going for like 1200 bucks. I'm guessing, you know, hotel graph would probably just send a postcard to whoever had these arrow signs and they would punch whatever you wanted in there. So there's a lot of different sayings he said on them. So that's pretty cool. Uh, what did I pay? 50 bucks for this small block Ford, uh, uh, early Ford flathead transmission adapter. They just look cool on the wall. You know, maybe someday we'll put a 39 Ford three speed behind a small block Ford. Doubt it. But anyway, I dig stuff like that. They're cool to find. If you ever buy these, you know, make sure the threads, any, anything with aluminum intakes, whatever, check to make sure the threads aren't all bunged up or stripped out or cracked out, whatever. I don't even know if this thing's ever been used i don't think it has it's all in really good shape and then we got this i don't know if it's a walker brand radiator that's uh for like a 30s ford oh, this was a super high-end radiator at one time plus it's got an ac condenser on the front of it but it looks like somebody just drug it around by a chain but he wanted 40 bucks and i was like oh what's it off of he's like i just want it gone give me 30 bucks and i'm like man it looks like somebody beat the crap out of it i wasn't bashing it i was just saying like man who would do that such a nice trade goes 20 bucks and it's yours i'm like well i would have bought it for 40 but absolutely i'll buy it for 20. this thing's had a rough life i don't know if it's any good but nothing else would be good for mock-up i'm thinking it's like a 37 to 40 ford radiator or something like that but you can make it fit whatever you want if you're uh, brave enough duff's checking it out he's like yeah i love coolant just kidding dogs don't drink coolant do they that's just a myth what else we got Oh, we bought a bunch of hubcaps, five and six lug Chevy rally caps. I think I gave 20 bucks for five of them. Two of them are six lug four wheel drive and then three of them are five lug or vice versa, something like that. But anyway, these things are getting super popular and they're getting freaking hard to find. People are paying like hundreds upon hundreds of dollars for sets of rally wheels that we used to just throw away. So I've been snagging those up because you know I like rallies. We got a set of rallies on that pickup actually. So, and then also another guy had LS swapped his Tri-5. So he gave me this Allen Groves catalog and we got V8 swap engine mounts for just a regular 350, whatever. Again, I don't think these were even used. And we got all the pulleys and brackets for like putting your alternator and AC compressor up top. Yeah, that set up right there. I'll probably never use it, but I'm a geek about pulleys and brackets and stuff like that because that stuff's hard to find. And I gave him 50 bucks for everything. So it was a screaming deal. He just wanted it gone. So who knows, maybe someday we'll do a V8 Tri-5. I guess we do have a, a six cylinder 56 out here. We could put a V8 in there with that. And I guess put AC on it and alternator up top. So a lot of good stuff at the Art Olsen swap meet. All right, enough rambling. We got to get this thing out of the garage, out of the way, emptied out. 
We're gonna move that thing out, pressure wash it. Then we gotta go get the telehandler because Chin's borrowing the skid steer and move that thing back. We might have to move this too. We don't wanna smash into that. It seems like we're never ever working on it. All right, let's do this. Yeah, I was just thinking, fuel injection, fuel injection, fuel injection, fuel injection, fuel injection. I only got two carbureted vehicles in the whole shop, and that wasn't even there when I was thinking about it. At, at the time, everything in here was fuel injected except for that thing, which I guess you guys don't know much about that thing, but now you know it's carbureted. We could have fuel injected that. It's a mess. I'm going to do some shuffling and uh, so we can get some water in here because Mojo doesn't want us to run out of water. Makes sense. You want to move some stuff around for me, pal? Okay, maybe not. Duff says you forgot the hubcaps. So I got these, I think they're 67 to 72 or early square body. Five of these hubcaps. These things I always thought were the most hideous things in the world. They still kind of are, but 10 bucks for five of them. So yeah. Oh, those are even GMCs. They're not perfect shape, but these things are starting to get, hubcaps are getting hot. Everybody threw them away and now they're coming collectible. And then also hidden up underneath there, there's a 64 only, Chevrolet Ram Orn Manifold. It's the one year that they were straight dumps instead of angled, and then it has brackets at the front for alternator as opposed to a generator. So I thought they fit 63 and four. Guy who had it said that's 64 only. Anyway, manifolds, I love them over headers and they're getting hard to find and they're big money when you buy reproductions and they're probably no good. So yeah, let's get this thing out of here. We checked and we got power at the gray wire on the fuel pump. So now we're gonna lift up the bed and see if we can't get at the old fuel pump. New plan, there's a latch at the front, so we have to get the bed to slide back first. So we're gonna do tow truck things. Hook the tow truck to the rollback to get it to slide back. We're trying. Duff really enjoys the tow truck life. Well, that was interesting. Shows how long it's been since I ran a rollback, but I didn't know you had to run it out that far before you, t I decided you had to run it. I don't know anything. So we got to sled out as far as it goes. We don't even have to tip it up because we can get at fuel pump right here and I'll show you. Look at this. Look at this access. Way better than cutting a hole in your bed floor. That's our breather. There must be another EVAP. I'm guessing that's pressure and that's return. Here's the connector I was playing with. Should have just done this off the bat other than now instead of taking up about 30 feet in the shop, it takes up 45 feet. Don't try to just lift your, take your telehandler and lift your uh, roll back up because it don't work. There's these locks up here. And I thought once we got past here, it would lift, but it's not. We'll figure it out as we go. Anyway, we get a better look at the uh, old underpinnings. Since they stretched it, they stretched a lot of the brake lines. The fuel lines are the same way. There's some hydraulic leaks. I'm sure these cylinders are going to leak. That's what hydraulics do. It's like concrete. It gets hard. Hydraulics, they leak. And uh, don't lean on that. It's going to ruin your good shirt. Speaking of good shirts, get yourself a good shirt from Mortski.com. Yeah, that's right. Brought them in-house, in case you didn't hear it the first time. All right, uh, I think we're gonna try to unhook the fuel line and see if we can find a way that we can just hook an external pump up to this. Or maybe we'll pull this one out, and see if we can't revive it, but we're gonna see what happens. Oh, look at that. 
I'm guessing that fuel, oh, that's, they, they welded a piece of flat strap there to clamp it to and then put a bicycle tube around it to hold it from vibrating. That's nice. Good stuff there. Of course, we had to haul water yet, so. Oh, Rex is doing work. She's full? Yeah. Yes, sure. Okay, I'm on hook the hose. Can we dump what's in the hose in there? Huh? Is it over full or no? Yeah. Okay, so let this drain out. Okay. All right. You said it was only half full. It was. It was. It was the top half. Yeah. It was getting cold. Well, it's a good thing I had you here to haul her. I'd have been in trouble. You would have been in big trouble. We're about ready to pull our fuel pump out. It smells terrible, so I can't wait to see what's inside. This is a snap ring that's holding it. Usually it's like a, whatever, turn lock ring. I don't know, a sixteenth of a turn, but this little snap ring there. Pick up these, what are they, Proto? Super nice, brand new set of these things at a garbage sale for, I think it was five or 10 bucks one year. Yeah, and you don't know how nice good snap ring players are until you actually use them. I would never go back to that. I used to have these couple of cheap sets from Craftsman or something years ago and they were hot garbage. The other thing you need is a set of these, I don't know, quick push to connect removal tools. I don't know if other companies use them or if it's only the GM, but it's made in USA. I think this is from like the help section in your regular parts or Lyle brand probably. Anyway, you slide those in, and then there's some metal tangs inside these connectors here, and they clip over that barb, bada bing, bada boom, let's get this thing out of here. Tech tip of the day, go on Amazon, I think these are for like drywall or something like that, pole barn garage, shout out to him. He uh, mentioned these, and man, they're nice, they're pretty affordable. The worst part about them is they just managed to disappear around here, I think I bought four of them, we're down to the last two already. But that'll be uh oh yeah. She is no bueno. Oh there's a problem too if it was running. There's our fuel hose. So even if it would have ran, look at how rusty. Oh you can hear it. She's uh, a little crunchy. You don't want crunchiness in your fuel pump. Uh, I suppose, you know, we ain't out nothing. You can buy this whole assembly, but you can buy a whole fuel tank with the fuel pump, or you can buy with the sending unit and everything, or you can buy, oh my gosh, that's so brittle. You can buy just the pump itself and wire it on there. So we ain't out nothing to take it apart. If we screw it all up, we'll just buy the whole assembly, which is what I usually do, but for our revival sake. Let's see if we can't just get the old pump to run, but I'm guessing it's locked up. And as corroded as that is, I feel like our fuel gauge isn't working. So we're just wasting our time, but I don't have one of these on hand. So we're just uh, we're just gonna wing. Oh, and I definitely am not gonna have any fuel hose like that. I just got regular rubber hose, which is not ideal, but this is easy enough to swap out. So let's see what we can think of. And I can tell somebody's been in there when you replace these fuel pumps. So almost all the time they come with a replacement connector that you uh, splice on, but at least they used heat shrink wire butt connectors anyway. So who knows, maybe our new one will come with that. But there is two different styles, or there's a California, of course, you know, Prop 65 pump, and then there's just your, the rest of the world pump. And there's a one connector pump and a two connector. There's four wires, two for the sending unit and two for the pump, power and ground, and then whatever, your signal wires for your sending unit. So, and then some of them apparently have two plugs versus one. So this is a one plug unit. So let's see if we can find one on Rock Auto or locally or what. I don't have one of these laying around, unfortunately. Yeah. See what we come up with. All right, we're gonna try something here. I've never done a GM push to connect fuel line. 
So we're gonna try flaring one of those with our master cool here. Duff is anxiously awaiting this big block to come to life. So I think what we're gonna try to do is, we got an old fuel line here from a small block that somebody had twisted off. So I cut the end off. I'm gonna put a flare on that just to steal a chunk of that. And all we need to do is splice that onto some rubber and we'll put just a cheapy inline fuel pump on there to get us going. Like I said, I've never done one of these flares before, so probably gonna screw the first one up as I have no idea what I'm doing, per usual. But if it works, I'm a hero. If it doesn't, well, either way, somebody's, some Dwayne out there's gonna be like, oh, you did it wrong. Yeah, Duff's like, Dwayne? You know Dwayne's here, is there? Here's our three ace die. I don't know. We'll see what happens, I guess. Make sure we got her good and tight so she don't slip. We just crank that son of a biscuit in there until she stops. Not a paid advertisement for Master Force. Tighten up our thumb screw. We give her a couple of good pumps. Oh yeah, pump it real good. Pump, pump the jams, pump it up. What's the name of that song? Comment down below. We can't play the real thing, so I just have to sing it for you. Copyright infringement or something. Well, it doesn't look like it slid. Is it just that easy? I would guess so. Doesn't seem like that leg length is as long. Yeah, there's definitely a lot less leg length in there. So I don't know if that's gonna work, if it's gonna seal up or not. Guess we're gonna find out. I told you I screwed up the first time. Yeah, there most definitely is not enough leg length. I think this is for forming lines for like TBIs that go into the throttle body. That's probably what it was. I think we're gonna have to try the old push to connect. Well, we got some good practice. That is a nice flare. It's just the wrong flare for what we're doing. What are we gonna try next? Oh, but that'll be a nice, oh, you know what I could use these for? Use that flare for when you slide a hose over it. Just put a little barb on there so that the hose don't wanna slide off. That's a pretty good idea. As opposed to a regular single flare that everybody does. What else we got here? Metric bubble flare, no. GM line forming, push to connect forming. Oh yeah, these are way deeper. All nice and deep like, that's what we need. That's it, boy. Get in there nice and deep like. All right, just for fun, we're gonna cut her way down here. So I feel like if we cut it off there, we're not gonna have a lot of leg length, either there or there or there. So we're gonna get down here. Cause I don't have rolls of 3 ace fuel line sitting around. I never really use 3 ace fuel line apparently. Just swap out our dies here, do it all over again. Hopefully it's as beautiful as the last one we made. We don't even have to worry about putting a fitting on this style. Cause that's what happens when you make the most perfect flare in the world. You forget to put the fitting on. For cheese and rice, work with me here. You want that good and tight so it don't slip out. It slides on you, you're not gonna get a good flare. We should call these Ricks. Rick Flare. That's what we should call the tool. The Rick Flaring tool. The RFT. Well, Rick Flare has been the man. As long as being the man was cool. And you want it? Woo! Come and get it! Yeah, I've definitely screwed up that flare. I don't know if it slid. You know what? Now we gotta get this off there. We'll try to figure out what happened and fix it. Let's try her again. Took and cleaned her up a bit in the wire wheel. Just the part that's getting flared. Now where we're clamping. Should clamp it as the train rolls by in the background. Yeah, we don't have any people around here, but we do have trains that come through once in a while. Almost as often as Mower Man. I'm gonna roll by the old shop. 
Alright, let's try this again. Second time's a charm, you know what they say? There you goes nothing. Where did that saying come from? Here goes nothing. Right. Let's do this. Oh yeah, she slid on us. Son of a biscuit. Now once it slid, it's probably never gonna wanna. Do her upright. Try pushing it in and rotating it a little bit. God, I don't want to reef on this thing too hard because that little rod is not very uh, large in diameter. <clears throat> Man, we'll see if that slides. I don't want to have to put a cheater on that little handle. Yeah, it slid again. Huh. Maybe there's a certain kind of material. Maybe you don't like these old 1970s quarter jet fuel lines. Oh yeah, and then these things don't ever want to come apart. Now I remember. Yep, didn't really do much. Son of a biscuit. Now we gotta figure out how to get that out of there. Since the old flaring wasn't going so well, old Tiffany said, hey, go grab one of those LS fuel rails you got laying around not doing anything with. And those got them push to connect flares, which are my dingers already on them. So we're just gonna cut that off there and there. We don't even really need the one to return. I think that'll spray into the tank, but cut it off anyway, because if we're gonna ruin this thing, we're gonna ruin it up real good. And then we'll just slip our hose over it with a pump and how about a bing, how about a boom, we'll be pumping fuel no time I really need to figure out that flaring tool I might have to call up Brent old half-ass customs and uh, see if he's got any pointers I know he's got that had that same tool before he lost it in the fire and he was using it a bunch so let's we'll check that out I uh, just continue so I went to go look for a high-pressure fuel pump I didn't have one on the shelf so I stole one off of 49 Ford because you know we're never gonna finish that and of course that already had what I believe is the correct fitting on it so we just sacrificed a LS fuel rail for nothing, but anyway. So we should be able to dip this in that fuel jug and then we'll have to, well, we'll have to use, well, we'll have to hook up the return line and put a chunk of hose so it dumps back into the tank. And we might use that to pump said tank out and find somewhere to put the liquid that's in that tank because it is hoisted. So I'm gonna get this hooked up and we'll get a power source and we'll see if we can't get some fuel pressure up there. Well, look at this concoction we dreamed up. We took that busted up fuel lid from our swap meet find, knocked what was left of the fitting out. We got our return shoved in there. We got our pressure side shoved in there. We got our fuel pump hooked up. And look at this, she even functions. What a deal. Also, I ran that through the fuel line and pushed all the old stuff that was in the lines out and into the tank. So they should be all cleared out. Good to go. And would you look at that? 50 pounds of fuel pressure. She might light off. I'm gonna hook the battery back up. I unhooked that last night before I left and yeah, set up a tailpipe cam. We'll see what happens, I guess. All right, pump's going. Battery's hooked up. Slingshot engage. Slingshot engage. Come on, baby. It's running. It don't sound good, but it's running. I think we got a miss. But Maybe it's just got some bad gas in her. Oh, it probably doesn't help that we don't have any of that. 
just hooked up. Yeah, let's let's put the mass airflow sensor and whatnot back on quick. Also, we should put some cooling in it. That'll clear up our check engine light, no doubt. Now let's see if she runs any better. I need a better roach clip. Stay. I guess I didn't even, yeah, quarter tank. So if this is a 30 gallon tank, what's that? Seven and a half gallons of fuel. So we've got oil pressure. No, I isn't starting. a little gas oh yeah 60 pounds of psi's of oil pressures we got a service engine soon light i suppose we could check that because this is obd2 so i do have the capability of doing a little bit there huge hesitation when i give it gas it like the rpm drops down as i goose it Ooh. let's let her run for a little bit Probably should have done a compression test because you know when we were cranking it over, it was like rrr, rrr, rrr. so it, it's we're low on a couple of holes anyway. We should have done it before and after, but we're just gonna do an after because we're lazy like that. It's uh, definitely not hitting on all eight. They said it was running rough, so who knows? 55 pounds of fuel pressure. That's good. Yeah, let's see what we got for codes. I had to get all the code scanners out. These things are like 20 bucks on Amazon. They're probably 30 now. Get yourself one if you got anything that's OBD2 related. Uh, P0102 mass airflow sensor. So, of course, because we didn't have that plugged in. And of course, cleared the code, it went away. Still runs like hot garbage. So, yeah, it's funny we don't have like a misfire code or something, but we got a transmission line cooler of sorts. We're going to have to address that. Let's see if we can't get the bed to function though. You know? Why not? See if it's got enough power to do it. Alright, how do we turn this? PTO engaged. I'm guessing, yep, PTO. There we go. I can hear it humming. Oh yeah. Ain't even got enough power to run it. Come on, baby. There we go. Keep running. Oh, it's because the lever's engaged. That's why if we unhook that lever, woo, that was interesting. Now we'll try it again. I didn't know those levers could go over center. Come on, baby. Now we got the PTO running. Now. I don't know how any of these, can't read them on this side. That's the bed retract. Well, at least we know the hydraulics are working. Pump's working. Hopefully we don't crush our battery here. Well, that all works pretty well, it seems like for somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. Now we just gotta make it run better. I guess we'll pull some spark plugs out, see how they look. It's funny we're not getting a code. Well, like I said, we're gonna need a fuel pump, but we don't know if this engine's any good. So why throw a fuel pump on it if an engine ain't good? We'll figure this thing out. If we gotta put an LS in this thing to make it work, that would be great. I mean, it would be great at the end. I don't know when we would find time to do it. You know how we are with projects, but this thing would be good with a six liter in it. 
Better yet, an 8.1. Like that thing. Probably slide that bed back out of the way so we can work on said fuel pump. Ah, we'll just leave it for now. We just can't win, can we, Duffers? Hooked up our snap-on compression tester. Put it in cylinder number one and got zero. So that, ah, it's just the tester because that thing isn't that great. Put it in number three, 105 PSI. So I had Mojo crank it over, put my finger in number one, and there's nothing. So we're going to stick the bore scope down there, see if we can see a hole in the piston. And if that looks good, then we're going to pull the valve cover, and hopefully we just had like a, a sticky valve and it bent a push rod or a push rod came off or rocker arm. Something easy peasy lemon squeezy, right Duff? Yeah, let's, let's hope for that. At least we found the issue, but it's a big issue. All the plugs looked pretty dang good actually. A little bit sooted up. What were they 605 auto lights? Uh, there was no, none of them that were Hiroshima catastrophic. So there's that. But we knew we had a weak hole when we were cranking over before we even started. So, and because it was sticky turning over, maybe that's why it was sticky. Yeah. Hopefully we can just straighten a push rod or find a push rod. And free up a valve, we'll be good to go. Because I know nothing about these Vortec 454s, and I don't have one laying around. And I don't want to go through the effort of swapping in an 8.1 or a 6 liter. Although that would be pretty sweet. Let's go get the schlong and ram it down the hole. So I think I found the culprit. Looks like there's a witness mark there. Let's see if I get the camera just right. There's a witness mark right back there. Oh, there it is. And yeah, let's see if I can show you the valve, but I think it's the exhaust valve. She's hung open and kiss that piston right there. That's the valve. So I'm guessing we bent that valve in the process. And since that valve is not closing, we're getting no compression. So since the piston kissed it, it's surely bent. It's, we can't just pull the valve cover. The head's got to come off. Great, grand, wonderful. And good, great, grand, wonderful. So, now we're at the debacle what we do next on this thing. We definitely should do a compression test on the other bank for sure. This side, we'll get a good look at all that when we have to pull the head off. We should find out if we gotta pull the other side off. Like I said, I don't know a ton about these things. If we just gotta doctor up that valve, it ain't a big deal. I wish I knew more about this engine because they said it was running rough, so, but that looks like a pretty fresh mark. I'm guessing what happened is a lot of times ethanol will get in the valve stem on these things, unfortunately. Ethanol is, I run it, I don't have any issues with it, but most of my stuff is regularly run, but ethanol will get on the stems of valves, they'll get sticky like this. They don't retract, the spring can't pull it up, piston kisses it, get where we're at. But I don't know if this thing was an oil burning engine. I don't know if the rods were, or if the rod bearings or crank bearings, I mean, it's got all kinds of good oil. It's got good oil pressure, so that tells me that cam bearings and rod bearings and main bearings, all that stuff is good, oil pumps good. So bottom end should be pretty sound. Uh, but they said it was running rough, so I don't know, that could be an electrical issue, that could be a fuel delivery issue. Like I said, I. I'm not in love with these 454s. They were they were all right. Uh, they're better than a small block of that vintage for power for something like this because this thing's gonna this thing's heavy empty. And then if you put a car on the back, much less two cars, you're gonna need some some freaking power. I don't want to do the diesel thing because I already got two diesel pickups and it just explodes. So I think we're gonna try to stick with this Vortec. Either we fix this one or we find another one to drop in it. Like I said. Uh, I'm not opposed to doing an 8.1 swap, but there's no aftermarket support, so I'd have to find a complete 8.1 vehicle and swap the harness and do everything. And they never put an 8.1 in these body style, these 96 to 2000 one tons. So there's a little bit of work there. I, I think a six liter would be the easiest swap, you know, upgrade. And a six liter, your numbers are probably about the same, but the thing with a six liter is you've got unlimited aftermarket support. You can put turbos on it. You can put different heads, cams all kinds of programming. That's the other thing with these 454 is you, you kind of get what you get. There's not a lot of options out there for camshafts and tuning and fueling, you know, short of completely redoing this engine and doing kind of like what uh, Eli over at 
Rigid Customs. He's got this same engine on his stand. We, we, we showed it in our video when we were over there. But he took all the intake and everything off. These do have roller cams in them. He said he's got the same engine in his run stand. He's got an NV4500 and 205 transfer case, yada, yada. But he put a Edelbrock induction system on it so that he's got some adjustability there where we don't really have a whole lot of adjustability with this stock. You get the stock GM stuff is what you get. So I'm gonna have a sandwich and think about what we're gonna do here. But I think we'll pull the valve cover off because we gotta pull that off to get the head off anyway. And maybe we'll take a peek in there and, and get some kind of surprise, I don't know. But I'm guessing, yeah, I'm guessing ethanol stuck it. Boom, but we should probably crank it over and see if we gotta take the other side apart too. I'd sure hate to pull one head off, put it all back together. Find out we should've done the other side. And we're no good at doing valve jobs around here. We're really hard on valves, moral of the story. Well, that's gonna end the day here at Morski Repair. And the other thing is, no matter how much I soaked this engine in the cylinders, this would've happened. Unless I pulled the heads off or like soaked the valves and pried up on the valves and, and did all kinds of weird stuff, this, this was gonna happen. So don't give me the comment down below that, oh, if you'd have just put some Marvel or some acetone and ETF down the cylinders, you wouldn't be here. That valve would have still hung up unless you completely tore this engine apart, cleaned everything up and reassembled it. And who's got time for that? Oh, so disappointed in this big block, aren't you? We just wanted to do rollback things. Well, glad we didn't spend 200 bucks on a fuel pump. That would have been a disappointment. Did a compression test on the other side and everything was 95 to 105 PSI. 100 on two and four, 105 on six and 95 on number eight. So I think that bank is okay. Now, I guess before we get too deep, let's just pull the valve cover off and see what we got going on there. Not looking forward to this. I wonder if it would almost be easier to just pull the cab off. Yeah, what the French duff. This is not gonna be fun. All right, let's rip into her and see what we got. Well, Valkyrie's off, and this rocker arm should be like these ones, but it's not. And also, that push rod should be in this little guide here, and it's not. So, let's see if we can't fish that out there. On a positive note, it looks really clean in here. So, maybe this was giving them fits before, and that's why it was running rough, and we just finished her off. Who knows? Anyway, we're going to need a push rod, I think. I'll let you know in a second here. Oh, there we go. Uh, it's actually surprisingly straight. Maybe got a little bend to it. Let's go find out where is the flattest surface in the entire shop. Definitely not that wood sagging bench. How about this flat top? Yeah, she's got a curve to it. Yep. Just a little bit right there. So, we need one of them. I thought it was going to be way worse, but... Whatever, bent is bent. We could probably straighten it out and run it, but... I'm guessing they're probably super affordable. Or we'll go find another used one. I'm guessing they're probably not the same as the uh, earlier big block scenes, how it's a roller camshaft, but who knows? Not a big block expert. But what are we gonna do? Yeah, we're gonna have to get that valve out of there, so I guess we gotta figure out how to pull ahead. Fantastic. We're really good at taking stuff apart, but we never really put them back together.
All right, like I said, I'm no expert, but we're down to pretty much just the head bolts. I got the three bolts off the flange. Only had to heat one up. Heat goes a long ways. Didn't snap any studs off yet. Knock on wood. And this thing's the high performance version. You can tell by the way that it is. This is an Aspen. You can tell that it's an Aspen tree because of the way it is. They got a valley pan in them. That's full of crap. Somebody's been in here. You can tell by the liberal application of the schmoo on the china walls and the mismatch hardware on the intake. We got a little corrosion going on in here. We're going to have to clean out, Duff says. It wasn't too bad. Had to pretty much get every tool out of the toolbox to do it. There's a hole in the floor pan I noticed underneath, and it's also got a really new 4L80 in it. Like, there's no grease on it whatsoever, but look at this floor mat's hiding. Oh, yeah, hey, just that. Just rub through their feet. Oh, no, never mind. There's uh, multiple pieces of sheet metal there and still a hole. Don't worry. Fixed it. I wonder why it would rust out there. Snow boots rusted? I don't know. I'm guessing somebody's foot rubbed a hole through the floor mat and then they had snow and whatever salt on their boots. That's what did her, ain't Duff? Hey, Yeah, no rides today. And a couple other neat things about these Vortex. Oh, is that a reman? I think it says remanufactured. These shivers are plastic, which is kind of silly. I did mark which way the rotor was pointing before I took it out, but oh, there it is. Probably wore the mark off. They got an upper aluminum intake and then a lower aluminum intake. And they have the reason they do that is so the bolts split through the middle. It does have eight injectors. I thought it was just one big throttle body in the middle or something like that. Big box got this silly heater hose that you got to try to hook up when you slide it all together. That's a real treat. But yeah, we're just about ready to yank her all apart. Yeah, we had the stubby wrenches out. We had the torques out. We had all of the line wrenches out. The Swedish nut lathes. The Inverted torques or E sockets, whatever, pry bars, quarter inch, three eighths. Didn't have any half inch drive stuff out yet, but we had everything out. I have I don't use these E sockets much, but man, they are handy when you do use them. Same with those stubby wrenches here. I think I bought these at Northern Tool probably about 15 years ago. I don't use them a lot, but they sure are handy for what they are. Had to use those to get the fuel lines back there because they were a treat. Got them busted loose with the line wrenches and then I couldn't get another bite with the line wrench. So luckily it was loose enough that we could get her with that stubby one. So we're going to take the vacuum, clean this out of there. Got that nice little shop vac. And uh, yeah, everything looks really clean in there. So like I said, somebody's been in here not too long ago. And we'll go from there. We're just gonna leave the exhaust manifold on it because I'm sure we're gonna break some of them silly studs off. Uh, the wire for the knock sensor had been spliced. There's just several other indicators that somebody's been in a whole bunch of mismatched hardware on the intake. Just regular three ace bolts and then some were flange ed, some weren't. This is that holds going from the water pump to the intake that big blocks only have. And we should probably replace that while we're at it. But hopefully we can get away with just a head gasket Intake gasket, valve cover gasket, and even that I think we could reuse. Okay, maybe do a manifold gasket too while we're at it. We're definitely not pulling both heads though. Let's get this one off, see what it is. Spoke too soon on the half inch impact. feel dumb huh Duff? Apparently there's bolts underneath the manifold so we gotta pull these manifolds off and take those bolts out before we pry this thing off. Big block life.
There we got them all. I'm sure that's gonna be light. All right, the head is off. We were missing these four bolts right here. Everything looks pretty good in there. Other than that kissy kissy mark, I'm pissing number one. These things have roller rockers on them, right? I don't know. Let's uh, take a look at this valve. There's a problem child right there. That exhaust on number one is not closing. So we'll knock that guy out of there. Let's see if we can figure out what size it is and get one coming. And our handy dandy valve spring compressor here that is in no way adjusted for a big block Chevy, I can imagine. Probably got it at some auction sale. And it's, oh man, it might be right. Okay, that's not working. I've never tried to do this on a stuck valve before. Maybe we'll give her a little tap here. All right, finally got the uh, valve spring compressor to work. No, we just gotta pop our little retaining clips off without pinching our fingers. Go, hey! Okay, that one ain't quite gonna go. She's a little off kilter there. Let's use our handy dandy Morsky screwdriver. Uh, we're gonna grab a different bite. There, I think we got it. Got it. Now we just gotta release the tension. Bada bing a bada boom. Take our spin on. Looks like the umbrella's pretty new. Usually these get pretty brittle, which that one did break, but. Heat cycles, stuff like that, not good on them. Oof. I don't know if we want to power that through or not. Got it. Oh yeah. She's had some heat and she's uh Galled up pretty good. That's been stuck for a while. Oofed up. We got the old valve out of there and you guys can't see it, but the guide is, she's a little bunged up. So we're gonna see if we can get a reamer, clean that up. We gotta wait for a valve. So, but everything else looks pretty good in here, so I think we're just gonna put a valve in it and run it. There is a lot of this corrosion, so we might try to pressure wash out the head and maybe the other head and the block. I don't know, but we gotta get gaskets coming. We gotta get a push rod. We gotta get that valve. A few other things we should probably get when we're at it. Maybe put some radiator hoses and fix a tranny leak, but we're gonna get some parts going. Have a sandwich. Think about what we're gonna do next, but I think it'll be an, an okay fix. We don't have to go full on engine swap. I did find one on the Facebook marketplace for about a thousand bucks. Somebody's definitely been in here before, but there ain't much of a ridge. Like I said, it is. I mean, I think somebody's went through this thing, doesn't have many miles on it. That is well taken care of as far as service work. All right, check back in a bit. Go back into your home. Stay. Well, we did a little more digging. We rounded up a reamer and we were gonna clean that up. Then we popped out an exhaust valve on number seven here. And we slid that in there and that guy just, she's cooked. So we gotta order a bunch of parts. Uh, if I had a spare head around or a spare valve, we could cobble this together. But seeing so we kind of want to have this thing around long term, let's fix her right. 
We're definitely not going to give it a whole valve job or anything, but we'll slide a couple out and look at them just to make sure. But like I said, everything looks really clean in here. This thing's going to take a lot of power and push some heat, so we want to cook those cylinder heads out and get that baked out of there because we don't, we don't want our big block pushing heat. So that being said, I think that's where we're going to have to wrap it. Um, you know, if we just don't have time to jump onto another project and I hate, I hate leaving you guys hanging here like this. I'm not the, I'm the bang it out in one video project guy. Cause I hate watching multiple episodes, but this thing takes up so much real estate. I can't have it in here in my way. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to order a bunch of parts. We're going to grab the hood or another white hood because I have two OBSs in the yard that I picked up for parts. We're going to throw a white hood on it, close the hood, kick her outside, wait till the parts show up. We'll get the cylinder head all redone. Throw that on and uh, and then we'll promo video it, of course. We'll have it in another episode. And then we're going to redo that cylinder head on the next video of this truck and put it on there, get it running, uh, get a fuel pump coming clean the fuel tank. This thing's going to probably need some brakes. Tires in the back actually look pretty good, but if those tires are hauling a car on top of them, you know, ain't safe. So we're probably going to get six new tires coming. Probably patch the hole in the floor a little bit better. Maybe slide some carpet or something in it, or maybe even slide a whole seat in it. So yeah, this thing's going to be pretty good. It's going to be pretty handy. Who knows what we'll do. It would be really cool to, like I said, LS swap this thing, but let's just leave it together as now. And then the other thing that I thought would be really cool is if you put like a, you know, a 57 GMC pickup cab and front clip on it, you'll make it look old school, but let's just get her working the way she is and work the bugs out and then uh, forget about it and leave it rot in the corner. Just kidding. And then do some of those upgrades, maybe next winter or something like that. But I think this thing's going to be super handy. I've always really liked these things. Uh, everybody's had them likes them. My buddy who's got one uses it all the time for strange tasks. Really enjoys his. So thank you very much for watching. Go check out the links down below for the merchandise. We got the spread shirt and then we got Mortsky.com where we got the screwdrivers and all that stuff. I use that screwdriver a ton on this project. Yeah, these things are freaking good. Not only a screwdriver, you got a magnet on the end because magnet's the only way to go. It's got a clip so you can put it in your pocket. Awesome. Check out the other stuff. We got air fresheners, we got keychains, we got decals. What else we got? We picked up something else weird, new. I don't remember what it is, but go check it out. Mordski.com. We're shipping them out here. I actually got a couple orders back, but we're going to head on to the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Check out the other videos. Remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun. Big blocks are fun when they run. Right, Duff? Yeah. Alexa to resume the music. She doesn't listen to little talk, talk like a man.